What up, y'all? Rap Critic here. And uh, before we get this video started, just wanted to let you know Black November is upon us, uh, where you can get all these requests for reduced prices. My editor will show you what all of those reduced prices are so that you can see what they are. And you can uh, go to the Kofi link below and check out my uh, requests and make them if you want to. So, you know, get with it, act like you want it. And uh, let's get started with the video. Very, uh, you know, imperfect and organically so that the people at home were like, oh wow, that guy's like super relatable. <laughs> Hi guys, Rap Critic here, and this was a fan voted episode. And if you'd like to vote on future episodes, plus see them early, as well as join the RC Discord and get access to exclusive podcasts, head on over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash rapcritic, link in the description below. So let's talk about Ice Spice, a new rapper with a smash viral hit called Munch. Boasting a throaty, commanding voice and a bouncing drill track, Ice Spice is the latest MC in what's been a great internet renaissance for female rappers to snag a viral hit rocking a bratty, sexy, bad girl vibe. And look, for this video, I, I want to skip past the usual female sex rap discourse we typically have. You know, the one where the side that's against it ranges from dudes who just get hyper insecure when women talk the same caliber of shit male rappers do, to people who genuinely feel that black female expression in music is often exploited and pigeonholed into just sexuality. And the other side that's for it that ranges from women who think it's awesome and represents common women taking control of her autonomy, to guys who, you know, just watch these music videos with the sound off. No, let's jump past all that this week and get to the real reason we listen to the newest, hottest rap songs. To absorb the cool new slang of the season, of course! And what have we got for the people today? Let's go to the slang generator! Alert, alert, new slang drop, munch. You thought I was feeling you? So, from context clues, it comes off like a double entendre for the kind of guy who takes her to restaurants to eat out and then take her home to also do some out eating. With those being the only two things he should expect to happen. It's essentially a more specific version of a simp, a dude who's so enamored with a woman he gives her anything she wants without getting anything in return, much less the guarantee she even likes the guy. You thought I was killing you? And honestly, the hook earns its viral moment, I think. What with the melodramatic pause between lines like she's doing a real-life Ferris Bueller turn to the camera moment. You thought I was killing you? No. That nigga a munch. <laughs> <laughs> It fulfills that general female power fantasy of having a dude with means curled around your finger just because you're that dang cute. At least, that's the double meaning I gleaned from it, but let's take a look at an interview for her official word on the matter. It's like, they really just, on your body, like, just a hater? Or it could just be, like, somebody that's really obsessed with you that just fiends to eat it, you know? Oh, so it can refer to a stan and a hater? That seems like that's inviting a little confusion there. Well, okay, I mean, you know, some words can be contronyms, you know, meaning opposite things, but in a way that still makes sense to both meanings. And hey, you know, in this modern age where engagement drives up views and clicks no matter positive or negative, maybe she's got a point here. I mean, you know how they say the opposite of love isn't hate, it's empathy. She can want Stereo Shorty a fan. And in a case like this, that line could be referring to a girl who genuinely thinks Ice Spice is a snack, or it could be her sarcastically remarking on someone watching her with a stank look on their face. But Spice's thinking is, well, either way, they still had no choice but to look, right? Hate it or love it, you're still compelled enough to actively react and engage with their existence. So, uh, to give your attention to this person out of all 7 billion people in the world you could be giving your attention to is to give them that power over you. And geez, clearly the type of person who revels in it. Seriously, this girl's at like poison ivy levels of male manipulation. He mad as fuck, I won't give him a chance. But still he gonna do what I say. Do what I, I say. swear I'll be stuck in my ways. Stuck in my but still ways. he gonna do what I say. You know, I'd say it's cold-blooded. She's stringing him along like this, but I mean, hey, you know, this dude can decide to stop wasting his money at any point. Besides, I, I feel like she's the person who makes it pretty plain what her intentions are. Don't want your love, I just want the blue. So if you're still shelling out cash on her, th that's on your bank account. I mean, there is a lyric that does make this sound like this might be a bit of a kinky, maybe pay pig thing. Saying you love me, but what do you mean? Pretty ass fucking like that I mean. And you know, hey, if that's the dynamic you like, you know, I don't judge. I mean, aside from the identical rhyme thing going on there. It is technically playing on a double meaning for the word mean, so I guess there is that. Now, regarding how I personally feel about the joint, eh, I think it's cool enough. The beat's got that drill aesthetic to it where the hi-hats and snares hit sounding like little drill bits while the rotating feel of the bass and drum patterns sound like the track is actually spinning around. And even her flow kind of matches that spinning, cycling feel in a way with how her delivery has a descending energy to it, as her voice swings lower and lower as each phrase evenly sways over the beat. He wanna sex, niggas be dreaming. I'm from the X, niggas be scheming. I'm on their next. Stays not breathing. Thumb in a check, blow their knee, 
Overall, I'd give it a three out of five. And you know, I hate feeling like I'm damping something with faint praise when I give a bit of a middling rating like this, but like, t to be real, it didn't exactly set the world on fire on my mind when I heard it, but it serves its purpose of being a confidence booster for hot girls on Saturday nights. That's fine. It's not hurting anybody. I say that let the zillennial hot girl Annie reboot find her zaddy warbucks. And look, I know there's people who instinctively turn up their nose at a basic feeling joint like this, with the feeling that this is taking up space for another better artist who could be in the spotlight. And those people aren't wrong to think it's not fair, that lopsided forces are responsible for bringing less musically ambitious rappers like this to the forefront. And look, at the risk of preaching to the choir here, I put the blame for all of this squarely on you, the viewers! Seriously, I mean it. It's 2022. Corporations aren't responsible for making vapid songs popular. That's a 90s excuse. No, now with the age of the internet, the ability to control what got popular shifted out of the hands of the huge companies and back into the hands of the people. The average majority of folks on the internet who choose directly every day what gets popular. And it's still a bunch of shallow materialistic crap. So don't act like you don't like this shit, in the general sense. I guess it wasn't the big wigs keeping your favorite artists out of the mainstream after all. It was the will of the people all along. So hey, maybe we should own up to the fact that a lot of people are just shallow and enjoy shallow shit no matter what snobs say you're supposed to be liking. And, and that's okay. Everything that gets big is pandering to a majority of people's baser instincts to some effect, right? Or it wouldn't really catch steam in the first place. That said, if you say dumb stuff, sure, you, you could still catch these analytical hands. But if it's something like this that's just a regular turn-up joint and don't say anything egregiously stupid in it, there's nothing to be tense about. So let that viral TikTok artist have their day, or, or 15 minutes, or, or I guess 10 seconds at this point, but, but you get the idea. Well, before we end here, let's briefly kick it over to the Patreon comment section, where if you're a $5 and up member, you can leave a comment on the song I'm reviewing, and if I like it, I'll feature it on the show. This week's comment is from Life is Strange, who says, Yet another weak trap song from another dime a dozen SoundCloud rapper that feels like it's only half finished. I'm with Todd in the shadows on not really liking songs that feel like they were made just for TikTok. Goddamn. Uh, I have similar issues with the song that he had with Unholy. Truthfully, this barely even feels like an actual song and more like a joke skit. Goddamn. Well, that's the episode. And hey, by the time you see this episode live, the next episode will already be available for patrons. So if you want to see it early, head on over to patreon.com slash raftcritic and get access to that, plus the exclusive episodes of my movie podcast and, you know, all the stuff I told you earlier. Can't do that? It's cool. Just if you like my stuff and you want to support, leave a like if you like because it helps. Comment if you have something to say because it helps even more. And hit the subscribe and the bell afterwards because that's what helps the most. So until next time, I'm the Rap Critic. You don't have to like my opinion, but, you know, the song's just kind of, like, it's okay. You know, it, it's, you know, it's not a big deal. I think we're just going fuck it with this video. I'm feeling real. I'm feeling, I'm feeling loosey goosey. <laughs> uh, if you can make it better, better then. Take off my shirt if I want to. Doesn't matter. I could be in my drawers.